it to get here and just just play ball. Has Southern Miss changed a bunch since he was there? Like, I don't know. Uh, how is the perception of the program? I would say we got the same perception. Uh, same, same, same motto. Motto. Uh, just getting the black, uh, attacking the ball. We still got the uh, the nasty bunch, what they call our defense. So man, we just go out there and just try to hold up to that name and go out there. And I know those guys gonna keep it going. But when I was there, we that's what we live by, nasty bunch. Um, just just doing all you can to just giving it all you got out there on the field. Did you ever like a YouTube hat? <laughs> what did you see? I YouTube his videos and uh, I just like the way he play. I'm at to go back and and break him down some more. But uh, yeah, I like the way he play, and most definitely I'm at to go back and try to try to steal some steal some steal some tips. He was playing when some of us were covering the team. You make us feel old. <laughs> Uh, not yet, but I got a few uh, pass deflections. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta get my hands on the ball. I gotta, I gotta steal some picks for sure. Which DB do you think has had the most interceptions in OTAs? I want to say, I think Minka's up there for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I think Minka's up there. I know you came in as a very accomplished college quarterback, but I know it's another big jump to covering some of these guys. What has it been like to cover people like Devontae Parker and Kenny Stills out there? Uh, I mean, it, like you said, it's a big jump, but uh. Deep down, you just gotta trust yourself, and mostly I'm just trusting my speed, and I'm, I'm just doing everything I did that got me here, and just building off that. What's the worst and the best experience you had on one of those guys? Uh, I don't know. Like I said, just just trusting my speed. I just gotta. Sometimes I'm trying to sit on stuff and stuff like that, so I just gotta trust it, and uh, just just go what I see off film, and just believing in what I see, basically. Uh, How do you learn that process? I mean, it's a few. I, actually, I go around the locker room asking all the vets, uh, Bobby, Xavier, uh, Lip, TJ, all those guys. I'm getting knowledge from all of them, just trying to see, like, what's the difference and, and how could I better myself and, and, and separate myself in the room. Bobby said that you remind him of him. Has he mentioned that to you? Yeah, he, he actually did. I, one day at the practice, I just went up to him, and uh, I just got out of that shell of just hiding back. So I had to go talk to him. I was like, man, why you do this and, and why you do that? Because I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, I want to I wanna be up there where those guys at one day. So, uh, yeah, I just I decided to just stop shining around and just go out there and speak to all those guys and just, and just treat them like they're my brothers. From a football perspective, is there anything that you see similar in your style to Bobby? Uh, physical. I like the way he plays, man. He's he's a physical guy. He's not scared to go in there and, and, and get rough with you. And I like that. And that's that's just how my game is. He just got paid and he was a fifth rounder. You were a six, right? Right. Does that give you some hope that you don't have to be a first rounder? Oh man, that gives me a lot of motivation. Yeah, I, I look up to him a lot. So that, just to see that and where he come from, fifth round guy, late round guy, yeah, it means a lot. It does. You know, you're coming to the end of your first three in the NFL. How was it? How was it like? Uh, every day, I can say I laid a brick, I laid a foundation to get better. Every day, uh, I may have I may have a few mistakes, but then every the next day, I I build off that. I make sure that I don't mess up again on the same mistake. Every day, I'm just laying a foundation, just stacking bricks. Tell us more about that shell that you were in when you first got here. Uh, you know, like every, I'm pretty sure every rookie just new guys in the room. You know, I mean, you you come out of college with guys three three four years. You you see them every day. Now you're the new face. Now you got to know names and stuff like that. So just, just I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. Just being shy, I guess. I don't know. Can you explain it? Uh, yeah, I know a few of them. Yeah, for sure. Not all of them. Not all of them, yeah. I ain't going to say that. How difficult is that to learn 98 new teammates? I mean, it's very difficult. I mean, like you said, I'm learning 98, and they only learning one, really. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty tough. Have you been on Isaiah Ford, who's visiting with us later today? What makes him different? Uh, Isaiah just, I mean, he's a, he's a fast guy. I don't know what his 40 is, but the way he, he's so light on his, on his feet, I can tell he's pretty fast. I don't know what he ran, but I can tell he's fast. Did, did you, do you have experience playing the nickel spots in college? Uh, I played it actually at practice, but never in the game. So I got a little experience there. Have they worked you at all in the nickel? Uh, no, but we got a lot of guys working a bunch of spots. I, I mainly been left and right corner every day, just switching it up, getting used to this side, getting used to that side. Not just mainly sticking on one side. Did you move in college? Oh yes, I did. I did. So you're familiar in college. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
boundary, boundary, boundary and field, yes, yes, sir. There's a lot of nicknames in that secondary. X, Tank, TJ, G5, what's your nickname? <laughs> they call me Big Country, man. Why that? Big Country because I'm from Bassfield, Mississippi. So, you know, Mississippi is country. So, yeah, Big Country on my name. I mean, that's my new name until I guess I get out of this rookie shell and I can get my C nail back. Are you okay with that name? Yeah. I'm okay with Big Country. Who, uh, who stuck that on you? Uh, Coach Odom, okay. for sure. And it, was it just purely because you're from Mississippi, or did he detect the accent? Yeah, he detected the accent. They say I, they they kind of tell me I talk too fast, so sometimes I gotta slow down. Like if you hear me say Bassville, Mississippi, they don't understand that I had to break it down Bassville, oh, okay. but I kind of run with it Bassville. Cornell, who's been working in the slot besides Bobby, obviously. Uh. It's been a few guys, Mink, uh, Jalen, Jalen Davis, and Lucas. It's been it's been a few guys, a couple more guys. Everybody just working around in different spots. Alston's been outside, Jonathan. Yes, sir. Back to the nicknames. Are there any uh, are there any of the other rookies that have been saddled with that nickname that they didn't like so much? Uh, I'm I'm not sure they don't like him or anything, but I know it was Jalen Jalen Davis. His nickname is uh, Surfer. Cause he's from San Diego, and Coach say he like to surf, I guess. And uh, we call we call uh, Jonathan Jonathan Austin. We call him Snoop because of his dreads and his long hair. We call him Snoop. And uh, what did we call Meek? We really just call him Todd. Okay. Yeah. They're not. They don't sound like derogatory nicknames. But it's oh no. Tide. 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 Oh, yeah, Tide. Tide. <laughs> they do, it sounds like something you're trying to, like, you got to earn your way out of being called that. Yeah, I, I guess. At point, I, you earn the right to be called what you want to be called and stuff. Right, right. Thanks, man. No problem. Thanks, you know. No problem. Yes, <laughs> 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 Isaiah's right outside. So, um, that's when the swelling started to show. And uh, and then we got the the test done, and and it showed that I had the tear. What was the um, what was the actual injury? Uh, it was meniscus. Yeah. And how has the rehab and the recovery gone? And how do you feel now compared to a year ago? Right. It, no. Uh, rehab has been uh, great. You know, uh, I don't even think about it anymore at all. Um, uh, and uh, that's a great testament to our shrimps, uh, our shrimp staff, and our training staff as well. And um, and I had some some uh, really good guys in there uh, rehabbing with me as well. So, Raekwon and Ryan. Yeah, yep. And uh, and uh, like uh, I think Raekwon did a story about how competitive that that was in there. And um, I think that that kind of helped us push through some of those dark days where we really didn't feel like rehabbing or we were kind of down on ourselves that we wanted to play and things like that. And, and, and to have Ryan there as a leader to kind of p- help us push through was, was really huge for both of us. So were there any like competitive games that you guys used to play? <laughs> well, there was this, uh, we have this thing, it's a machine that's called uh, BFR, it's blood flow restriction. So you, um, you, it's like a Velcro strap that you put around your leg and, um, and you use it around both of your legs and it kind of inflates. And it's like almost cutting off your circulation to a point. And you work out with it, so it's like maximum effort, but you don't have any weight. And we'd ride the bike for 10 minutes, and we'd see who can get the furthest. And it was, it was kind of suicidal, but um, it, uh, it ended up going on for a while. And then uh, our trainer stopped it because he got a little scared. Because each time uh, the next person was just trying to beat that score, and whoever said the highest score was like, whoever's up next, you know, you got to beat it. So it, uh, it was fun, though. It was a lot of fun. I think Raekwon was the last to go, so um, I think he had the record, and then they stopped us right then, so no one else got to go again after Raekwon beat it. How would you describe your confidence level right now in terms of um, your belief that you will make the team and contribute? Oh, uh, I'm extremely confident in that. You know, um, I've had a year to just kind of pick everyone's brain, uh, so to say, um, just to learn and uh, understand the terminology, the, the language, what the coaches are expecting and, and how they want things done. And um, I think just spending all that time and uh, having the confidence in myself and in my abilities that, that the Lord has given me, uh, you know, I'm extremely confident. How excited were you to start the teams this spring after having this last year? Extremely excited. You know, um, just – Thinking back, thinking back on uh, the first day of OTAs, you know, it kind of put everything back into perspective of just appreciating the game, you know, because 
a sudden play just like that, a, a routine play that I had done a million times over and over again had caused, you know, for my season to be over. So um, I couldn't wait to get back out there, and it's been, uh, it's been a long time coming. This spring, what percentage would you say you practiced in the slot and maybe about what percentage you've been outside? Uh, it's been so-so. Um, I've spent a bunch of time inside, a bunch of time outside as well. So uh, just being ready for wherever um, they decide to put me. I'm comfortable playing both, which is a good thing. So I think it's, it's always a good thing to be versatile and, at uh, being able to play inside and outside. I've, I've played in the slot a bunch of a uh, bunch in high school, a bunch in college as well, um, my freshman and sophomore year, and then uh, a little bit my junior year. I played mostly outside my junior year, but I've gotten a bunch of experience being inside. So, where is the difference in terms of that position? How, how could you explain the difference between being a flank or a split end versus being a slot? I think uh, in a slot you have a little more freedom, a little more wiggle room in terms of. Uh, your releases and your routes and things that, and how you get to break and maneuver and things like that. And then uh, a lot of times you're going against uh, either smaller corners or you're going against uh, linebackers and, and safeties and things like that. So Obviously, you want to play last year, but uh, your redshirt year, so to call it, how much did it benefit or how, how much can you learn by watching it? Like right, and I think that uh, it helped me a ton. You know, I got to um, spend a full year of just uh, listening to – to uh, our coaches and uh, how they taught everything and how they wanted to be um, to be ran, I got to learn the playbook for a year, um, and I got to learn from uh, some of our veteran guys and some of the guys that were here last year. You know, I think um, that just learning from them and asking those guys questions and then seeing the things on film, and then going to some of the games and watching it on the sideline, I kind of got to see how everything worked uh, before I actually ran through it. So I thought that was uh, pretty good for me. I got to put on a little bit of weight, um, a little, and, and it was good weight as well. And um, I think um, me and Dave have spent a lot of time together, um, just working hard, you know, on being functionally strong as well, not just bloating up and getting stiff and things like that. Being able to move and still have that flexibility. Is there, is there, there's an awful lot of depth at the wide receiver position on this team. What skill or part of your game do you think will be your ticket to the 53-man roster? Uh, just being available. Whenever, um, whenever my number is called on, you know, um, my job is to go out there and to compete and uh, to execute, to know my job, to know know where I'm supposed to be, to be where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there, and uh, and let all the, those things sort themselves out. I think if I just focus on doing what I have to do, um, doing my job, I'll be fine. Isaiah, just to build off that, obviously there are four veteran receivers who are going to be on the team, barring injury, and then you've got Shaquem. Do you think about the numbers game of okay, are they going to keep six? Does that thought go through your mind? No, I don't think about any of that things. I think that's for uh, Coach Gase and uh, Coach Jefferson and um, and uh, Mike Tannenbaum and, and Mr. Greer. And um, I think that's for all those guys. I leave all that stuff to them. I focus on you know knowing my craft, studying my craft, and being the best that I can be. So Dolphin fans have obviously never seen you play, and they probably YouTube you and saw a few highlight <laughs> clips where you ran past the game guy or something. But um, fill the fans in a little bit about what your on-field strengths, what you believe they are. Uh, I think I'm a competitor, first and foremost. Um, I, uh, I want to win at everything that I do. Um, and I think that starts um, with, with my mindset on how I approach everything. Uh, I'm a versatile player. Um, I can play inside and out. I can make those contested catches. Um, and I'm a technician. You know, I think that's something that I pride myself on is being really good in and out of my breaks and running my, running good, really good routes and things like that. So.